However, the reason why I'm talking about all this stuff right now is because everything changes when the rebound animation kicks in. The rebound animation has a small window after the rebound where you cannot do anything. There is nothing you can do. However, after that window has passed, I can actually cancel the rebound window into special moves. Like so. So if you try to punish my deflect animation, I might even be able to uppercut you out of that. And not only that, but unlike previous Samurai Showdown games where the window, there was a small window in which you could cancel after the rebound. In this game, as soon as the window in which you cannot cancel passes, you can cancel your rebound at any time, at the beginning, at the middle, or at the end. If I do C, that's the earliest I can cancel, or I can still cancel way late, I can cancel very late, etc., etc. So this creates a little bit of a mind game here once you deflect. Are you free to hit somebody? Because if they deflect like this, I mean, if they rebound like this, do you want to stab them? And even if you don't have an uppercut, there's something else you can do, and we'll get into that later on once I talk about another mechanic in the game. One thing that I do want to point out, though, is that remember how I said stand B is not cancelable on hit? Well, deflect, the rebound animation is the rebound animation. It doesn't matter. If you have rebound animation, you can cancel it. So even though stand B is not cancelable on hit, because of the rebound animation, it's cancelable on block. And now you're actually going to see why not having a def rebound animation on some of your moves is a bad thing. Because if you don't have a rebound animation after your move is blocked, you're screwed. <laughs> because after they block that, you are just going to be sitting there finishing your move and you are dead. You do not have the option to save yourself right there. Uh, yes, and chip damage killed. Yes, chip damage can kill in this game. Now keep in mind, uh, normals do not do chip damage, so normals do no chip damage. However, there is a something about that later on we'll get into where normals will do chip damage, and we'll talk about that in just a little bit. Cronius asks, and again, make sure you type an at jchenzor in the chat so that I can see the questions a little bit easier, and so people watching this on YouTube can see this a little bit. But it says, if you want to commit to a rebound cancel, do you have to commit? or can you delay it or do it reactively? It depends on what the opponent does, right? If the opponent does a light punch reaction like that, like if he just jabs you like this and it's fast, you just have to predict it. But if they try to hit you back with a C, which they probably can't anyway because it's not fast enough to actually punish the rebound animation, you can definitely react to the startup of the C and hit them. It's, it's a mind game. There's a guessing game here. The person in the rebound is still not in favor of the situation, but it's still very, very important that you remember that they have those options. So again, you probably can't react to light punches if they stab you back and go like, he light punched and then uppercut him. But you can definitely react to slower moves and see that and then uppercut them like that. But if the opponent baits you out, now you just whiffed an uppercut and you're really dead, right? However, as I said, there's another option. We'll get into that in a little bit. Actually, ooh, do I want to talk about it now? Because the one thing I want to mention is that deflex can be canceled into special moves and nothing else. I have my universal overhead. Can't cancel into a universal overhead. Can't cancel into a, a burst. I can't cancel into a a backdash or a run or whatever like that, you're basically stuck doing this. Like you're stuck in this unless you do a special move. The only exception to this is deflect. So there is something called a deflect and we'll talk about what this move is. And this is what changes the rebound game completely. Deflect changes everything because this is a universal mechanic. Everybody has this because not everybody has an uppercut but everybody has a deflect. 
And once you start throwing the flex into the rebound situation, oh boy, it becomes a crazy, crazy thing. So uh, he's he's asking if you can react to it being blocked before inputting the special. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Clearly, clearly, clearly. Like, if, and and plus a lot of times, even if it like. I can do, oh, well, the, the light punch, as you can see, the, the rebound is very, very short. So it is really not. I mean, on heavy, you can't cancel it anyway, so it really doesn't make a difference. But you can definitely react to seeing yourself bounce back and doing the special move. A lot of times, you're just going to option select it. So, look, if I'm Howlmaro and I'm poking with this, I'm just going to poke and then fireball. I'm just going to poke and fireball like this, right? Because then if he does block it, it comes out. And then if he doesn't block it, nothing happens. You just hit him, so it's normal. But again, keep in mind that all rebound animations can be canceled into deflect. And that changes the rebound game completely because deflects are a very, very powerful mechanic in this game. So keep that in mind. So that's what I want to talk about defense. That was the first thing I wanted to talk about defense, which is the rebound animation. The second thing I want to talk about on about guarding and defense, and this is something that you're going to have to just get used to when you play Samurai Showdown, okay? One of the standard questions you're going to ask in almost every fighting game when you play is, what's the frame data? Is this move safe on block? Is this move minus? Is this move my turn? Is it the opponent's turn after they block the no, 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 no. In Samurai Showdown, I'm just gonna tell you right now. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. If I do, if I do uh, this into Fireball, the opponent can absolutely jump over and kill me. They can absolutely jump over and kill me. So you don't necessarily want to do it every time. But again, back to the frame data stuff. I'm telling you right now, frame data is not gonna be as important in this game. Why? Because everything is punishable. Everything is punishable. Almost everything you try is going to get you killed, okay? The thing, only things that aren't gonna get you killed are lights and mediums. Like, these are the safest things you have, right? Remember I have a slide kick? Remember I have this cool slide kick? I'm holding up. That is delay. That's delay. If I slide kick, I'm dead, right? So if I really go for that, or if I go for a run kick, and they block it, I'm dead, right? If they block an uppercut, I'm dead. If they, this uh, this is an overhead. If they block that, I'm dead, right? If they block this, I'm super dead. You see how long it took me to jump? If I throw a fireball, like, I mean, safe-ish on block, but keep in mind that the startup on this is very long, so it's easy to jump over and punish him for it. But for the most part, you're gonna realize, I mean, I think even this move makes me dead, right? Yeah, look at that. I can definitely get stabbed back after that. So basically, keep in mind, you almost never have to ask, is this move safe? Is this move punishable? Because 90% of the time, the answer is yes. Now, there are going to be exceptions to the rule. And then there are going to be the opposite exceptions in which a move will have so much delay that you almost feel like it's a bug, that you feel like it's a mistake. Like Tam Tam, if he jumps up and throws his super and it creates this giant column of flame, he lands and he goes, wah, wah, and he just sits there and he's there for like 10 years. When Kyoshiro jumps on his frog and his frog tries to attack you after you block the frog, don't try to run up and panic punish him because he has to jump off the frog and after he lands from the frog, he still has delay after he touches the ground. So trust me, things are punishable in this game. You do not want to be throwing things out willy-nilly. Jump-ins are barely plus. Like if I do this, uh, let me see if I can make the computer jump attack me here. Yeah, okay, so let's switch sides here. So watch, like, we'll see. Look how fast I threw him. That's actually a legit tactic. After you get blocked, or even if you get hit by the jump attack, a lot of times you can throw them right away because jump in hit stun, jump in hit stun and block stun is so short. Look at that. Look how fast I threw him. So even jump ins don't cause a lot of hit stun and block stun. So they can be safe on block, but it's very hard to make them safe. You have to get it like. 
perfectly deep in order to get them to be plus. Now, how do you get away from this stupid annoying throw tactic? Well, if they throw back dash when you land, like just do something like, um, and then back dash, and then they try to throw, and you'll see that throws, look at that, look at the delay on a throw. <laughs> yeah, if you bait out the throw like that with a back dash, then you get a freestanding speed punish. And you drain 30% of their life for doing that. So there you go. So yes, so basically you are not going to find a lot of situations where you are plus on block. Plus on block is something that is so rare in Samurai Showdown. It's just, you shouldn't even think about it. So again, What's really kind of nice about this game is if you are anti-frame data, well, this is the game for you because you're not going to have to care about frame data because for the most part, yes, it's your turn. For the most part, yes, it's punishable. So you really don't have to think about it, right? <laughs> which is great, which is fantastic. It's awesome. You don't have to sit there and study all these numbers. You just hit C and kill people. It's really fun. It's really great. And so there you go. So that's one of the, that was the other thing I wanted to talk about uh, defending in this game is that almost everything is supremely negative on block, and that is a good thing. That is definitely a good thing. Why is my phone not working anymore? Hi phone, hi phone. I can't access my list because my phone doesn't want to turn on anymore. Oh, there we go. Whew. I do, I do not need the expense of buying a new phone right now. <laughs> okay, so that's defense. There's also one extra uh, thing about defense is that there is such a thing as just defending in this game. If you know what just defends are from CVS2 or from previous Samurai Shodown games or from Mark of the Wolves, for example, if you block at the last second, you get that big blue spark. So you see that big blue spark right there. That is a just defense. Boom. So instead of just holding back when you block an attack, which will give you the regular thing, if you block at the last second, you get a just defense. So what does the just defense do? Does that make it so that you have more uh, time to punish the opponent? Does that make your recovery bet? No. No, it does not. Block stun's the same. Block stun's the same. You basically don't get any extra new frame advantage for doing this. You get basically uh, no no change in frame data off of this all right no extra frame data off of this so what is the point of doing this what what in tarnation is the reason for doing this well look at the bottom left of the screen that is my super meter it is empty right now and I'll talk about all the mechanics of the super meter once we get to that part however it's important to note that when you just offend someone you build up a ton of meter Normally, if I block stuff, I build up nothing. The only other way to build up meter is to get hit, and you build up a ton of meter. But if you don't want to die and build up your meter, just defend, and I can build up my meter. Now I have a full meter. When you're in rage, now I have access to my super. I do extra damage, etc., amongst other things. And so it's very important. And for some characters like Ishamaru, uh, rage is very important for their entire gameplay. Some of their moves get buffed. Some of his moves get buffed to the point where it becomes a very, very powerful mix-up. And so you want to have rage. So learning to just defend things are important. And yes, you can uh, just defend uh, multi-hitting moves, uh, like going just, 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 just defend. You can actually just defend multiple hitting moves. However, one thing that is very, very important to note. And I'll set up another character because I'll, I'll need another character to show you this. Um, who should I use? Who has a good multi hitting attack? Uh, let's do. Uh, let's do. Ah, yeah, you know what? This will be the easiest one. This will be the no, 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 no. Feet don't fail me now. Okay, now feet fail me. By the way, I'm gonna go to a different stage just so you guys can see how beautiful the stages are. This stage at night is just so 
Oh, God. I mean, like, it's effing beautiful, okay? It's effing beautiful. I love the way this background looks. My, I think I could play on this stage forever. Just because this stage has been in all the Samurai Showdown games forever, but this is the first time it's in 3D. And so it just looks so beautiful. Oh, yeah. Kuroko in the background is awesome in the dojo, but look how sick this looks. Oh, God. Look how sick this looks. Oh, my God. It's so pretty. It's so pretty. Oh, God. I love this stage so much. But the one thing to know about this game, so if I did this with Charlotte over here, like that move right there, Theoretically, I could just defend the whole thing. Feet don't fail me now. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna swap controllers here. Um, if I could, if I'm fast enough, I could absolutely just defend that whole thing. I can go just, 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 just. But it's very hard because like Mortal Kombat, if you're from Mortal Kombat, you'll be familiar with this. Like Third Strike, if you're from Third Strike, you will be familiar with this. This game has no absolute guard. What is absolute guard? Absolute guard means that once you start blocking something that is a true block string, you've probably heard that before. A true block string means once you start blocking it, you can let go of the controller and it'll keep blocking for you. Samurai Showdown has none of this. If I let go of blocking in the middle of that, I get hit. All right? That's just how it works. If I just stop blocking, I get hit. And that's the way it works. So there are actually a lot of interesting situations where characters will have moves. Like, for example, Ukyo has the move where he throws the apple and he swings the apple at you. And then he chops up the apple. Because there's no absolute guard, it becomes an actual mix-up, even though this move looks like it's terrible, right? Because... <laughs> Train the cats. Dude, that'd be awesome. Uh, this is another beautiful stage, by the way. So, here's the go. Uh... What's the DP startups? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what the actual frame data on the DP startups are just yet. Uh, they're not horribly fast, though. They're not terribly fast, but they're not terribly slow either. And in fact, for the first time ever in a Samurai Showdown game, DPs are invincible. Um, they've never actually had invincibility before, but now they can actually be used as you would expect them to be as an uppercut. But here you go. Uh, I'm playing on a base PS4. I'm playing on a base PS4. Uh, so that's why the loading times are not good. So, Ukyo has this move where he throws this apple like this, right? But again, there's a lot of delay on it so that, you know, if I whip it like this, you can kind of punish me for it. However, I have three different strengths of this, right? And I also have the heavy one, where I just keep swinging like this. Because there's no absolute guard in this game, this is actually kind of a mix-up. Like, if they thought you were doing the light one and they try to punish it, or take advantage of your minus frames, and then they start walking forward, they get hit, right? If they don't expect it to last that long, you can actually catch a lot of people by surprise. That's like one of the things that you'll start learning about this game. Like, uh, Kyoshiro has like a, a yoga flame kind of move that hits multiple times. And if you think it's gonna stop at one point and let go of the controller to go and punish him, you get hit. So be careful about that. So definitely uh, be careful with that. Again, there is no absolute guard in this game, and that is very, very important. So that's why learning to just defend multiple hitting moves is not exactly the greatest option. If you can pull it off, you're awesome. If you can pull it off, you're awesome. But keep in mind, when you do just defend a move, you also avoid all of the chip damage, right? So um, if I actually throw a fireball like this, he does take chip. I don't think I can just defend with my foot, but we'll see. So he will take a little chip. You can see a little chip draining, but if I can actually just defend this, 
I take no chip off of that. So I'm not taking any chip. So that's another reason to just defend moves is you can save yourself from the chip debt. So that's actually very important from just defending as well. There's also one more thing about just defending in this game is that after you just defend, if you hit light punch and medium punch at the exact same time, you do a counter attack. And if you noticed, counter attack did zero damage? I thought it did a little damage, but that did zero damage. I think that's doing absolutely no damage at all. But it actually knocks the opponent back out of your block stun and resets the situation. So you'll never get any kills off of this. You won't get any like damage, but you reset the situation. And I want to see, um, whoops, too far. Yeah, you can actually get some pressure on the opponent too. So you can turn a whole match around by just defending, pushing him. Ah! and then running up and starting to do pressure. So this is a pretty powerful tool. It is not one that we are gonna be seeing get used a lot early on because of the fact that uh, people aren't gonna be used to it. But it's very option selectable. If you're just trying to just defend, you can just kind of hit A, B at the same time, uh, light and medium at the same time, and then you can do that. But if they whiff, the problem is, if they whiff their attack and you try to do it and uh, you thought they were gonna do that and then you try to just defend. Oops, I, that actually hit me. You might accidentally dodge because that's what you do when you hit light and medium at the same time when you're not in um, when you're not in that just defend block stun. So you could dodge and kind of end up killing yourself. So uh, yeah, let's see. Thoughts on the game being called footsie based? Is it truly a neutral heavy game, or will turn to something more oaky heavy in the future? No, no, just dynamite. No. This is going to be a true heavy neutral game. You have, there's like no Oki in this game. Like Wu might be the only character that has any sort of form of real kind of Oki. And even then, not even really that badly. The fact that you can roll forward, backwards, or get up in place is really important in this game and messes up a lot of the Oki situation. And while you can keep pressure on the opponent when they get up, it's just not gonna be a Vortex game. It's just not gonna be that way. Uh, do I get more meter for doing the, do I gain more meter for doing the blowback? Uh, what do you mean? Let's see. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, let's see. Oh, shoot, that's right. I have to hit him with it to make it go away. Okay, there, it went away. That's right. I'll get into that in a little bit too. Ow! Oops, damn it, I hit the wrong buttons of all the dumb things. Did it look like I gained more? I couldn't see, I couldn't see in time. All right, I'm gonna have to switch it around then. Uh, let's see. Okay, let's see. No, it doesn't look like you gain any extra. You don't gain any extra rage meter for the blowback. The blowback is there just to push the guy away and that it's, so there you go. So yeah, so that is what the Just Defend is for. It avoids chip, it builds up rage, and it gives you access to the blowback attack. And the blowback attack, as you can see, can really do a lot to change the pace of the game, it seems like. Like once people start getting good at it, oh my God, my cat is attacking me. He walked, she walked on the joystick and Yashimoto almost killed me. Come here, kitty. Okay, now she's avoiding the button. Okay, she almost killed me. Anyways, um, <laughs> all right, back to the, back to this, back to this. Okay, so that's just a pen. And uh, the Just Defend blowback move is officially called Stance Break. Oops. Ow, I did not mean to do that. 
is called Stance Break, I think. Uh, let's see. Do they have them listed here? No, they don't. Uh, pretty sure it's called Stance Break in any case. So there you go. Um, 